This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And apart from the symptoms described to me via email, which I'll read to you in a second, I really have no idea what is wrong with this build and I have no idea if we're even going to be able to fix it. So I will document everything in this video, the entire troubleshooting process I go through so that if you're having similar symptoms with your rig, Maybe this video can help. Now the specs of this build outlined in the email are as follows. Ryzen 7 3700X, uh, NZXT Kraken Z73 AIO, MSI B450 Gaming Pro motherboard, 32 gigs and four eight gig sticks of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro modules, a two terabyte, three and a half inch, 7200 RPM hard drive. Uh, we have an SX8200 Pro 512 gig NVMe, uh, an RTX 2070 eight gig, and then the Thermaltake View 31 is the case. And of course, we can't forget the EVGA G1 Plus 650 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply down here. Now the symptoms, I'm gonna read verbatim what he says in the email. Started happening after I cleaned the computer and put it back together. I connected the power supply and it runs for about a second and then shuts off. That continues to repeat until I turn off the power supply. I also replaced the previous prism cooler with the NZXT Z73, but even after installing the old cooler, it continued to shut off. So right off the bat, I'm feeling there's some sort of miswiring going on. Usually if a build is turning on and then immediately turning back off, there's some sort of power related issue there. If the graphics card was dead, the system wouldn't just cut itself off. We saw that in one of the previous videos. I'm not saying that it's impossible that it won't happen, uh, but more than likely, if you have a system turn on and then immediately off again, there's some sort of uh, surge protection in place, or maybe you have a short, or maybe just, there's just a component that's completely neglected. It's not getting power at all. The system sees that immediately and decides to turn itself back off to save itself from any further damage. So let's see if we can't figure this one out. Stay with me. The Patriot Viper VP4300 is a blazing fast Gen 4 NVMe SSD with a cutting edge controller and DDR4 DRAM cache with tight timings. Reads and writes peg well over 6,000 megabytes per second and included swappable heat shields ensure compatibility and ultra portable solutions. Enjoy a five year warranty with either one or two terabyte capacities and you can learn more about them by clicking the link below. Now the first thing we need to do is connect the system to power, turn it on and see if we get the same symptoms exhibited that are described in the email. If we do, at least we know where we're starting from. We're on the same page as the viewer. Nothing has changed between when that email was sent and now. And in this case, you can see it turns on and immediately turns back off. So uh, it's what he is describing. And I've seen this happen in, in multiple builds actually, and the causes have been a bit kind of all over the place. Uh, I would start first with connections. It doesn't require any hardware swapping. You don't need to have extra hardware and extra graphics card on hand. Just make sure that all of your connections are sound. Uh, and if they are, then you've at least narrowed down the possibility that it was some degree of user error, especially when this person was swapping out hardware earlier on. I wanna start first with the connections on the power supply side. Uh, we wanna first make sure that these uh, modular cables are connected where they should be and also make sure that they are fully inserted all the way. I've seen it where these are, you know, kind of like three quarters of the way in and sometimes that's not enough uh, to get the proper contact with the pins and that will result in, in kind of what you're seeing here. Um, from first glance, it does look like all of these connections are good to go. We do uh, have the 8-pin EPS running to the back uh, CPU header there. The VGA headers are different than the CPU headers it looks like on this power supply. So there's the you know, clear distinction there. And I'll make sure you get that right. But uh, yeah, everything else seems good over here. That one needed a tiny, tiny nudge, but I don't think that was the the root cause of this problem. And uh, we also have just the eight pin being connected up top. Now this motherboard accepts an eight plus a four pin, but the extra four are not needed, especially if you're not planning on doing extreme overclocking or anything of that sort. For a 3700X running just a, a standard overclocking profile, or even at stock, you don't need the extra four pins. Your system will boot up just fine. So there's no need to you know, dive deeper into this side of it. The 24 pin connector looks good as does the eight pin uh, supplemental PCI power and the six pin. This is an eight plus six pin 27 here. Uh, so yeah, looks good there. The major cables are connected the way they should be. Now I've also checked behind the motherboard tray for SATA and Molex connections. Those are all good to go. Well, no Molex involved here. And the SATA connections for the hard drives and for the peripherals, I think specifically the AIO, those are good. I also check the insulation around the connectors of the SATA connectors specifically. Uh, sometimes that insulation can be punctured by screws if you know you, you kind of jam those wires into very small spaces and then you thread something. Um, that screw can puncture insulation in one of the wires and short the power supply. That's happened to me more than once, um, which is why I know to look for it. But um, I don't see any of that. I, I don't hear any clicking, any shorting either. Um, the system just refuses to 
yeah, post. Um, it, it turns on and it turns back off. It still feels like a power supply issue though. Um, so it's gonna come down to an individual component, I think, at this point. I don't think it's user error. Uh, we're probably gonna start with the power supply just because that's what my, like that, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting, that it's a power delivery issue. Uh, but if we need to, we can swap out other components as well. Here we go. I just wanna very quickly see here if anything we did, any of the small reconnecting has fixed it. Uh, and it appears that it is not. Uh, HD audio looks good. USB 3.0, the two USB 2.0 connections look good. Front audio looks fine. Uh, we also have our fan connections up top, which look good. Okay, so we've ruled out pretty much any potential wiring issue. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with the power supply. A quick external power supply swap. We'll just connect the primary components, see if we get a post. If we do, that's a, a good thing I would think for the viewer because um, the power supply is a very cheap fix. Again, I can do that for free, that's not a problem. Um, the graphics card though, I mean, that, if, if it's the graphics card, that's a lot harder to replace. And not that it's hard to replace physically, it's just difficult to get a hold of one for, you know, a, a decent price. All right, so literally all I've done here, I've gotten a power supply that I know works, it has been tested in multiple rigs. I've connected it to the uh, power from the wall uh, and I've also got only the three primary connections running to the uh, build itself. So the 24 pin, the PCI supplemental power and the A pin EPS. We're not worried about peripherals. I'm not even worried about the pump turning on. <clears throat> Honestly, we're just trying to see if we can get past that first second uh, where the uh, system tries to boot cycle. So we're going to flip the switch here and it turns on automatically. It's so weird. Let's see. Ooh, okay. Um, same issue, that is, that is not good. All right, so at this point, things are gonna get a bit dicey. There is a CPU LED that lights up for just a split second right before the system cuts off. So it's maybe running CPU checks and realizing that uh, maybe the chip is seated improperly or there's a missing pin or what have you. Uh, but I'm going to swap the graphics search because this is a really quick thing to do here just to rule out the, uh, the unlikelihood that it is a graphics card issue. Um, this would be obviously bad news, but um, at least we would be able to narrow down one extra component by swapping this out and confirming that the same symptoms exist. Now this graphics card is a 1660. I've actually used it in a few other troubleshooting videos. I've confirmed that it works. Uh, so we shouldn't have an issue with it when we go about turning this on. Yep. Same problem. I suppose that's a good thing. And then the, potentially the most expensive thing in here uh, is not to blame. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that we got that out of the way. Now I want you to pay attention to these four LEDs here. When the system first boots, it runs through a check. It checks the primary components, make sure that they're all good to go. And uh, these should all turn off, possibly with the exception of the boot LED, uh, which is that bottom LED there, uh, if the system is good to go. So you'll see when we power it on, that the CPU light is the only light to turn on and then it shuts off, right? So it doesn't even get a chance to cycle through the other components to see if they're good because it's still stuck on checking the CPU. So uh, I'm going to remove the AIO, uh, the, the block uh, from the CPU. And we're gonna try reseeding the CPU first, seeing if that is the problem. Now, after a physical inspection, the CPU seems fine and the socket seems fine. Then uh, what I'll do is whip up my thermal cam. I have a flare imaging, a thermal imaging camera and we'll see if the CPU is getting hot getting hot, that means it's getting power. If it's not getting hot when we turn the system on, then that means that there's some sort of power delivery issue. Uh, it could either be the motherboard or the CPU in that case. The CPU would be the simpler thing to swap, so that's what we'll do first, uh, should we, uh, yeah, should that need to rise. So if you hold it out flat like this and look straight down, you can see all the pins are there. Nothing bent, nothing missing. Do the same this way. So visual inspection checks out. It's a good looking chip. The socket looks fine as well, though I will take my electric duster to it and clear any debris that might be in there. There we go. Well, same symptoms, same problem. This is getting a bit frustrating. At this point, I'm, I'm inclined to blame the motherboard more so than the CPU here. If I had to wager, I'd say the motherboard is the fault. I used my thermal cam. I checked to make sure the CPU was warming up, was receiving some power when the system tried to boot. It does look like it is receiving some power. Uh, but if I you know, had to guess, I would say the motherboard's to blame because most of the time CPUs, especially these newer ones, 
they just, they're not the culprit. They don't randomly die. I, very, very few CPUs have I seen just randomly die while running idle or under load in a system. Uh, so th that's why I'm thinking it's the motherboard because at this point we've narrowed it down to one of the three things in the platform. It could be RAM. If it's RAM, I'm gonna look really stupid because that was, that was a really simple swap. I honestly should have done that a bit earlier just because it does take only about five or six seconds to kind of play around with the different slot configurations. I also have other RAM kits I can test as well. Uh, but because the RAM is, is simple to swap, I should have done that earlier. Uh, the CPU also, because it is simpler to swap than the motherboard, which is under all of this, um, we're gonna swap that first as well. Even though in the back of my mind, I know that it's probably the motherboard at fault, I am going to swap the other two components just to be sure. We wanna rule out any other possibility. And if it's much easier to swap these out first, we want to do that. We want to get them out of the way. So I've tested all of his modules in various slots, tried just one dim, nothing. We got no uh, change in symptoms. I'm going to try one of my own sticks that I know is good. I'm going to put it in the second slot. Same issue. Okay, so it is not, it is not a DRAM problem, which I think I'm kind of relieved because that would have made me look really silly. I should have checked that a lot earlier. Um, okay, so we're going to put just one stick from his kit back in and I'm going to swap CPUs now. So I have the exact same CPU as him. This is a Ryzen 7 3700X. I have confirmed in various builds that it works. So there's no reason why this shouldn't work. So if we get the same problems again, then this is, I mean, this is a done deal. Definitely a motherboard problem. Yep, it's a motherboard issue. No doubt about it. Definitely the motherboard to blame. And just one more quick check here, so I know I'm not going crazy. This is his 3700X paired with one of my motherboards, an X570 board, uh, and the 1660 Super that we swapped into his rig previously. His CPU works. There is nothing wrong with his chip at all. So the motherboard I'll be swapping his with is an MSI X570 Ace. Now this is a bit beefier than the one he has, but it's still from MSI. So if he has a preference for a particular manufacturer, I try to, to replace components according to that as best I can at least. Uh, and this is, I mean, for all intents and purposes, an upgrade. We know it works. So if his motherboard is in fact dead, this should remedy the issue outright. A few moments later. Okay, all right, you guys aren't gonna believe me. Uh, I just had a hunch, okay? Uh, when, you, when you tell somebody that if the system was working just fine beforehand, and then you, you go and add an AIO and all of a sudden it won't turn on. I mean, an all-in-one liquid cooler, I mean, why would that be the reason why your system suddenly stops working? Why does it have to be at that exact moment? Um, so I, I had my suspicions early on. You saw earlier in this video where I was checking to make sure that they, the cable connections were sound, uh, that he didn't go about miswiring things because it, it just seems odd that that would be the, the perfect timing, right, for a component to die, right, when you happen to be switching your AIL. Well, I had just one more urge to remove a few more of these smaller cables down here at the base of the motherboard. So uh, specifically the HD audio cable, the USB 2.0 cables, uh, the USB 3.0 cable, which is also down here, and the the front IO wires. Now I had to remove those anyway to swap the board out, but I figured I'd give it one more shot and try to turn the motherboard on with all of these cables disconnected. So I just used uh, a screwdriver and jumped the two uh, power pins right on the bottom of the board and the system booted up just fine. I mean, what, like, and I've tried to replicate this issue. I've tried, you know, miswiring the front I.O. cables. Uh, I've tried like even leaving the USB 3.0 cable kind of like halfway unplugged. Everything looked like it was connected properly, which is why I didn't fiddle with any of this stuff down here. But obviously one of these cables was to blame because removing them solved the issue. And then when I went about, you know, reconnecting them myself, we still don't have an issue. The system boots up just fine. Why don't I go ahead and show you that right now? So here it is just like it was when I had it working the first time. Power it on. It's not shutting off. It's not turning off. The debug LEDs above the 24 pin are gone. I think this system is ready to post. Let's get the AIO plugged in. We'll also get the graphics card inserted and we'll see if we get a picture. All right, I am crossing my fingers. I think this'll do it. Come on, get a post here. Give me a picture. It's not turning off. We're already a lot further than we started. It's power cycling a bit. I think it's trying to train memory. I did remove them and uh, connect a different module at one point. <gasps> oh. Oh. 
boom! That's what I'm talking about. So we got this thing working without adding or replacing any hardware. This is the exact same components in the system that it came into the office with, and it just came down to a simple wiring issue. Now, whether or not this was user error, who knows? The board could have just been very finicky. You wouldn't have had to have paid uh, any additional money to a manufacturer for a replacement part, and you wouldn't have had to have waited weeks for an RMA process. This is such a good feeling. Now, there is one more elephant in the room, and that is cable management. Obviously, this owner was trying to figure out what he did wrong and that's why he didn't really bother making things neat and tidy while he was swapping cables around and stuff. I totally understand that, but I did let him know that if I could get it to work, I would fix his cable management form. We're gonna take care of that right now. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. And here we go. I am so pleased with how this turned out. So not only did we get it working and it came into the office not willing to post at all, uh, but we fixed that problem and we cleaned it up for him. We fixed that, uh, frankly, horrendous cable management. And we also dusted quite a bit as well. So the case looks so much cleaner. Uh, you know, we didn't deep clean or anything of that sort, but we did, you know, get rid of a lot of the surface dust that, that was on it when it first came into the office. We also straightened out the graphics card with one of these easy DIY uh, anti-sag kits. We have a video talking about these. If you want to check them out, they are linked in the video description. Very cheap and they'll fix that sag problem with your graphics card. No problem at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, cable management at the rear, fix that up. Not my best work, but there is plenty of space behind this motherboard tray. Um, quite a, a lot of space actually for a thermal take case. I'm not the hugest fan of this because it's it's kind of a, a poor airflow case, uh, but in terms of cable management and space, there's plenty of it here. I also flipped his AIO around 180 degrees. He had the tubes running from the front and they were barely able to reach the socket, which is why it looked kind of awkward. So I flipped everything backwards to where the tubes are along the back side of the case and we just have them wrap around the socket uh, kind of blocks the RAM, but I still think it looks a lot cleaner than the way he had it before. Also, I flipped this fan to an exhaust. He had it set to intake. He wanted three exhausts and three intakes. But you gotta remember, these are 140 millimeter fans, and these for the radiator are 120 millimeter fans. So depending on how you have your fan curve set up, you could still be running a negative pressure setup or a positive one. Uh, but uh, I, I figured that uh, swapping this around would be better in the long term because you don't have any dust filters back here. Your insides are gonna get really dusty after a while if you have this fan back here pulling in air. So yeah, this was super satisfying a very rewarding experience and I'm very grateful to the viewer for, for giving me a chance to make a video about this. Uh, maybe your system is having a similar issue right now. Check those small connections. It, it sounds really crazy and look, I, I even told him before I started fixing this, I told him, I said, look, it might just come down to a very simple wiring issue. Like I got that vibe right away, right when I read the email and uh, sure enough, that's what it took. Now I, I ran through a bunch of, some would say more obvious, some would say less obvious clues and uh, swapped a few things out, but at the end of the day, it just came down to simple wiring, and, and that's fine. Um, I'd much rather it be that and figure it out 10 or 15 minutes into the troubleshooting process than it'd be something much more complicated or much more expensive, like say the graphics card or the motherboard. Now, if you live in the Orlando, Florida area, have a broken system and want it possibly fixed for free, I can't guarantee that I'll fix it, but I can at least look at it for free and troubleshoot it in a dedicated video. Be sure to tweet me at Greg Salazar YT. I will have it linked down below. I appreciate all the submissions, all the inquiries. Look, the software stuff, that's it, it's a lot more difficult to diagnose uh, software related issues, especially if I can't replicate those symptoms that you're describing. If you're like, oh, it's an intermittent, you know, screen tearing issue or weird screen artifacts, like 
honestly don't bother with those because all I'm going to tell you to do is reinstall drivers, DDU, try a secondary card if you have one, and worst case, reinstall Windows. Software is super finicky, and a lot of times I just cut my losses and reinstall outright if I notice any weird software tweaks uh, that need to be made. Um, but if it's a hardware-related issue, as in your system will not boot up at all, uh, or it's, it's randomly turning off or what have you, that I can certainly check out. So I appreciate the submissions. Thank you for watching this far into the video. Again, thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment down below and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing a PC with me.